Every time I use Filmora 11, I'm blown away with how many titles, transitions, effects, split screen presets, you name it, are included in that software. Well, they have turned it up to 11 with version 11 of Filmora. A whole bunch of new features we're going to talk about now. I'm going to show you, amongst other things, how we turned this fairly plain stock footage drone clip that we got from Filmora itself, used some effects, used some assets that we also got from Filmora itself, and turned it into this really cool kind of CGI Hollywood movie looking type clip. No time to waste, so let's roll the intro and we'll talk about it now. Stuart Carroll here, pleasure to talk to you as always. Now before you ask, we're going to edit today's video on Final Cut Pro 10. <laughs> yes, that is our platform of choice. We've been using that from day one. We've been video editors for over 10 years now. We spend our life in front of the computer. However, that depth of experience means we recognize quality when we see it. And as such, we've been recommending Filmora for general content creation, beginners through to intermediates when it comes to video editing. This video is not sponsored by Filmora, although we will earn a commission if you purchase it using the link below. This video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound, our source of royalty-free music and sound effects. Here is the upgrade list for Filmora 11. Now, depending on your experience and your use case scenario, different features have different merit and value for you. You can pause and have a look at this if you like, but we're gonna jump straight in and talk about the first one now. Automatic audio syncing is a nice addition. I'm recording audio straight into the sound recorder I have in front of me now. It's not transmitting to the camera, so I have a second audio source on that video file with my camera, and it's not very nice because it's an onboard source of audio. How do we match this audio to this camera? Well, we can do it the old-fashioned way by looking at the waveforms and dragging things around to try and match them up so those waveforms look the same. If you're just doing it for one clip and you have nice clear audio like we have here, that can work quite well. But in bigger projects, that can be quite time consuming. With that in mind, select both the video and the audio track, go to the audio syncing button, give it a few seconds and bingo, look at that audio track. It's been shuffled along. It's now perfectly aligned with the waveform of the video track. Filmora's stock media integration is taken to the next level with Filmora 11. We have Giphy, Unsplash, and Pixabay. Now, we've used all of those sources before independently. You can go onto the website, you can have a look around, look for some free media assets, but having them integrated into the software is super useful. Just being able to drag and drop them onto your timeline there and then, do a search there and then is extremely useful. So to set up this Hollywood clip, we're gonna work on in a second. Let's go into the search box, type in building, and we'll scroll through and see what kind of clips are in the stock media library. There's the one we're looking for, so let's drag it into the timeline and we're good to go. If we do a search for fire, we find some really cool assets that we can use in our projects. We can narrow it down by typing in green screen fire, and this is how I found this explosion type effect that we're going to incorporate in this scene. We've got our stock drone clip of this building. We've got our stock green screen fire footage. How do we piece that all together? Well, masking is an important part of this. Masking has been available for a while now with Filmora, but now we have a redesigned interface that allows us to keyframe our masks. So we're able to change the parameters of those masks during the course of a clip. Keyframing sounds a little bit complicated. It's not, it's quite straightforward. I'm going to demonstrate by example. Here's the position of the first frame of the mask, and here is the position of the last frame of the mask. Look at the change in the angle of the mask. Now, the reason we need this new keyframing technique to move our mask during the shot is because our shot is moving as the perspective shifts. The angle of that mask has to change. Near the start of the clip, let's add a keyframe. That's going to lock in those X, Y position parameters and the rotation parameter. Now, as we scroll through, everything gets out of kilter a little bit. So let's adjust the rotation parameter, the angle of that mask line to match the roof line again. Another keyframe is created. And now when we play through, that mask is actually rotating. It's ever so slight, but it's so important that it's lined up with the roof. And we keep doing that throughout the clip. So we have perfectly keyframed movement of the angle parameter. 
Playing that all the way through, the line is moving, the roof line is perfectly aligned with the line of the mask. We're done. Okay, let's go down to the bass clip, turn the opacity back up to 100% and you'd be none the wiser that there are two clips there, two almost identical clips, but we now have that sandwich into which we can place our green screened fire effects. I think the end result is really good and although Filmora itself markets its software to the beginner to intermediate level creator community, it goes to show the depth that's in here if you're inclined to dig a little bit deeper and see what it can do. Shout out to our sponsor Epidemic Sound. This is the place we get our music and sound effects. Have done for a couple of years and let me tell you, we've used them all. Every single royalty free music provider we have at some point or other spent money on and Epidemic Sound, in our opinion, is the best. Huge selection of tracks, 35,000 songs, 90,000 sound effects, which are super useful also and the songs are good. It used to be that if you paid less than you got background music, kind of elevator music. That's not the case on Epidemic Sound. There's tons of songs on here with full vocal tracks that sound like actual pop radio music. It's pretty impressive. Added to that, there's unlimited downloads. You're not going to have any issues with copyright claims on Instagram, uh, YouTube, Facebook, any other form of social media, and you can cancel any time. So there's a 30 day free trial. Do check out the link below. You won't regret it. I'm really excited by the speed ramping tools that we now have in Filmora 11. This is an example of something that is being better implemented in Filmora 11 than it is in the likes of Final Cut Pro 10. We can do speed ramping in Final Cut Pro 10, but the interface is nicer here and there's more flexibility. Here's a clip of Alina filmed on a GoPro 10 at 100 frames per second jumping. Now it'd look a lot better if it was slow motion, but we could do that cool kind of speed rampy thing where she jumps at real time, but then it slows down in the middle and then it falls back into real time with a nice smooth transition between real time and slow motion. Very easy to do here. With the clip selected, go to the speed ramping menu item. You see we have some preset templates there that we can use, but in this instance, we're gonna do something from scratch. So we go to customize. The red playhead in the speed ramping interface corresponds with the playhead on the timeline itself. So we can find the peak of Alina's jump there and we're gonna try and slow things down there. So let's go back to where we want the speed to slow down, add a keyframe. Let's go to the end of the jump where we want things to start speeding up again and add another keyframe. Now, because we filmed at 100 frames per second and we're editing on a 25 frames per second timeline, we want to slow things down by a quarter. So we drag those two new keyframes down to 0.25 times speed. We can go one better though and add a freeze frame right in the peak of that jump. Use the left and right arrows to find the apex of that jump. Hit the freeze frame, select the number of seconds. Okay, and there we go, a freeze frame. We can clean things up by selecting that unwanted keyframe, deleting it, and we are done. So let's play it through one last time. Okay, real time, preparing for the jump. Up she goes, hey, slow motion, freeze frame. Wow, it's amazing, so high. And back into slow motion, back into real time. All nice and smooth, really nice. Like Filmora 10, Filmora 11 is already loaded with a ton of effects, but thanks to some more integrations, we can add even more effects and take the software to the next level, should you wish. Click on the effects panel and you will see two new items there, Boris FX and New Blue FX. These are third-party effects plugin suppliers whose effects can be used with the likes of DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Premiere, and so on and so forth, and now we can bring them straight into Filmora 11. Before you can use them, you need to download them, create an account, so on and so forth. And then when you restart Filmora 11, they will be integrated. And there's tons in there to get stuck into, even a 3D text mapping type function, which is part of the new blue pack. Now, I'm using the Filmora 11 beta software. I'm not 100% sure which of these effects are free and which might be paid for. Upgrades, you'll need to see once the full version of Filmora 11 is out, but what is really cool is the ability, should you wish, to bring in some of these third-party plugins. I really like the way video editing software is trying to help beginners edit really cool videos without much experience, and Filmora 11 does just that. Stuff like this we don't see with Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, so on and so forth. So we have template presets, instant mode and auto montage maker. Now at the time of filming this on my beta version of Filmora 11, they weren't available with the Mac version of Filmora 11. I think it's gonna be useful. Stay tuned and we'll get into that in a later video. 
Filmora 11 comes with a cloud storage system that is integrated into the software itself. Now, of course, cloud storage is nothing new, but having it integrated into the software does make me think this is something I would conceivably use. Because of terrible upload speeds that we've had in the past, just wherever we've lived, I've never really used cloud storage for video editing, but now we have fast upload speeds, I can see that it is something that obviously would be of value. And seeing how it's been integrated into Filmora 11 makes me think that this is actually quite useful. The one gig storage that we get for free will fill up pretty quickly, so you can look at the price plans and see if you want to upgrade, but even if we stick with one gig, we can save all our project files as a backup into the cloud and keep all our source media and our exports elsewhere, maybe have it on two separate hard drives, just the old fashioned way if you like, but knowing that we have a backup of our project files that we can always relink to if required is nice peace of mind. So there you have it folks, I think Filmora 11 is definitely one of the best video editing software packages out there, certainly at this consumer to intermediate uh, content creation type level of doing things where we're looking for all those transitions, effects, titles, stock footage, and then some of that more advanced functionality that Filmora 11 in particular brings. As I say, this isn't a sponsored video, but we earn commission if you purchase it. So there's a link below. It's a free upgrade to Filmora 10. So go ahead and get involved. I think it's a 30 day free trial as well. So there's no downside to checking it out. Anyway, pleasure to talk to you as always. Do stick around on the channel, subscribe, and we will see you next time.